Yo, what is good, YouTube? Krishan checking back in with another video. You guys are currently looking at every 212 bodybuilder that is qualified for this year's Olympia. And take a good look at this list, guys. Things are getting real. We are four weeks out from this year's Olympia. Now, I'm not going to read through this entire list, but in this video, I will be giving you guys my top 10 for the 212 in no specific order. I know you guys are really excited. Everyone wants to put out predictions, but I'm going to wait until the week of the Olympia. We have a month more of physique updates to see, and I need to see as many updates as possible before I make my true predictions for Open, Classic, and 212. All three of those divisions are going to be very competitive. But let's go ahead and start off in no specific order with Sean Clarita, since he just announced he will be standing in the 212 division. Now, the images you guys are looking at right now is from last year's Legion Sports Fest, which Sean Clarita won. At only 5'2", around 178 pounds, he beat Regan Grimes and Sergio Jr., who are both 5'11", at least 260, 270. And since Sean won the title in 2020 and actually placed second to Derek Lunsford last year, he has to be the favorite to win the title this year. And honestly, at last year's Olympia, him and Derek were very, very close. I wouldn't have been mad if Sean Clarita won. I'm not saying he was robbed, but Sean had some things Derek didn't have, and Derek honestly just outstructured him. But I think Sean is probably going to be better than what he was last year. He's been working the whole year behind the scenes. And actually, for Sean to be one of the smallest guys we have in the sport, he is also one of the strongest and my favorite to win the title this year. Now, switching over to Kara the Bajo, this is him from this year's Texas Pro, which he won after taking second place to Keon Pearson in Tampa. And a few people actually saw Kara the winning this show because he was more conditioned, had more vascularity and detail. And Kara actually placed eighth at last year's Mr. Olympia. But with Derek Lunsford and Nathan Epler leaving the division, I think that has to make him a favorite for the top six. Now, even though Kareth is 40 plus, this guy has an incredible physique. And being a little bit older, Kareth has a level of muscle maturity that some of these younger guys just don't have yet. I believe Kareth Bajo would definitely be in that top 10 at this year's Olympia, maybe even the top six. And let's switch right over to the prodigy Keon Pearson. This is Keon from this year's Tampa Pro, which he won, beating out Kareth Bajo. And I noticed Keon didn't have on any oil at this show for some reason. But as we all know, Keon Pearson has the genetics to be 212 Mr. Olympia. But can he nail his conditioning? And I've been really high on Keon this year. He's working with Patrick Tour, who is really good with getting guys in shape. But as I just mentioned in my last news video, a lot of these guys are very, very conditioned, have a lot of muscle maturity. I mean, the top two guys, Sean Clarita is 40, Kamalo Gardner is 50 plus. These guys have veins running through their entire body. So I think Keon may just need a little bit more time to grasp more muscle maturity. But then again, I don't think Derek Lunsford displayed more detail than Sean Clarita or Kamal L. Gardner from the front. He really outstructured them. So is it possible that if Keon comes in peeled, his structure can carry him the rest of the way? Now switching over to Ole Kirby, one of my favorite guys in this division. The image on the left was from last year's Prague Pro, which he placed second to Ahmad Eshkanani. And the image on the right was when he won the big man weekend in the 212 division. Open was actually won by Angel Calderon at that same show. This guy has made a lot of improvements and he was actually sixth at the 2020 Mr. Olympia. I believe he's going to be in the top six this year, but also a fun fact. I think he's competed against Angel Calderon three or four times, has been unable to beat Angel. But as you guys can see from the back of Ole Krivy, striated glutes is not going to be enough to dominate 212. You have to be conditioned from head to toe. Now, speaking of Angel Calderon, let's talk about him next. This is from last year's Romania Pro, which he won, beating out Ahmad Eshkanani. And then he went on to the big man weekend, winning Open, beating out Emer Omaraji. Angel Calderon was fourth place at last year's 212 Olympia. A lot of people don't really talk about this guy. He's a little bit overlooked. I believe he could bring the back up a little bit, maybe even have a little bit more legs. But as you guys can see from these images, Angel comes in peeled top to bottom. This guy is hard as nails. And this is why he is top four at the Olympia. This guy's had a whole year off, so I think he's definitely going to come in improved. And he's been working his way up the ladder. Before placing fourth, I believe he placed fifth or sixth the year before. Now, switching over to Kamal El Garni, the 51-year-old legend. And this is actually from the Tampa Pro when Kamal El Garni moved up to the open class. And I've said before, I actually like Kamal's look better in open around 220, 225. But with this being potentially his last year competing, he wants to go out with a bang and go for the 212 Olympia title. Now, Kamal placed second in Tampa behind Akeem Williams and ended up slipping down to fourth at the Texas Pro behind Andrew Jack, Martin Fitzwater, and Quentin Araya. But going into this year's 212 Olympia, he definitely has to be the favorite for first or second, being a former champion and not being out of that top three for the past three years. 
I think it's going to be a battle between Kamal and Sean Clarita more than likely. Kamal brings a crazy level of conditioning, and at 51 years old, I'm not sure what him and Chris Aceto are doing, but it seems like Kamal El Garden is improving, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the best version of him in December. And next, we're going to talk about Nasser Saeed or Nasser Muhammad. I believe this guy could actually be a dark horse for this year's 212 Olympia. He won the Arnold Classic UK and actually placed seventh at last year's Mr. Olympia, one spot ahead of Kerry Bajo. And as I mentioned, Derek Lunsford, number one, Nathan Epler, number five, are not competing this year. And with Nasser placing seventh last year and two guys ahead of him moving out of the division, he definitely has to be a favorite for that top five. But I don't really see this guy talked about a lot, and me included. I'll start swinging Nasser into some news videos. Now, switching over to Ping Young Long, for some reason, I could not find the pictures from the Thailand Pro, so we have to work with this video. As you guys know, Ping is one of my favorites going into this year's 212 Olympia. He has a crazy wow factor, comes in very conditioned, has world-class legs. My only worry about Ping, I can't really figure how to place him between these guys. I believe he's about 5'7", which may make him the tallest guy in the division. I just can't mentally compare him to guys like Sean Clarita, Keon Pearson, but he's definitely going to be in the mix. Now, switching over to Ahmad Eshkanani, this guy's in the mix at every single 212 Olympia. This is him from last year's Romania Pro, which he lost to Angel Calderon, placing second. But he went on to win the Saudi Arabia Pro, I believe. Ashkenani has placed as high as second at the 212 Olympia to Flex Lewis. His main knock, as you guys can see here, he has a lot of vascularity, comes in good condition, but just doesn't seem to have much separation in the quads. But Ahmad has never been out of the top six at the Mr. Olympia. And so far, I've given you guys nine guys who I believe will be in the top ten. But picking the last one was very, very hard, so I decided to go with four guys. Peter Molnar, Bo Lewis, Lucas Coelho, and Hassan Kalete. Peter Molnar has a great physique. I honestly feel like he's built for classic, but trying to meet that weight cap is so hard for him. Peter's legs could hold him back a little bit, but the upper body is crazy, good condition, and also a good poser. Switching over to Bo Lewis. Bo is 40 plus. The only real issue I see with his physique, he needs a little bit more leg size, which may be hard to do with his age. But even though Bo has smaller legs, they're separated and striated. And top to bottom, overall, he has a good shape. Now, the next guy, Lucas Coelho. Lucas has probably been in my top 10 this whole year, but he suffered a bicep injury earlier this year. And he also had a small injury to his leg about a week or two ago. So I'm not sure how Lucas will show up at this year's Olympia. And last, Hasin Kalete, a guy a lot of you people probably don't even recognize. He won this year's Toronto Pro and actually moved up to open in Vancouver. He placed third behind Ian Valier and Antoine Vallant, moving up from the 212 division. Do not be surprised if this guy ends up in the top 10. But this was basically 13 guys I guess I would have placing in the top 10. The first nine guys I pretty much have for sure placing in the top 10. Just that last spot is somewhat of a wild card. But I actually do have one wild card for this show. And that is Eduardo Correa. Eduardo just qualified for this year's Olympia by winning the Fit Power Show. He took two years off from the stage after suffering some serious injuries and going through a lot of surgeries. This guy brings a crazy level of conditioning, detail, muscle maturity that some guys just don't have. If you come in off to this year's 212 Olympia, you will get beat by Eduardo Correa. Now, I know I did leave off a few names. Jang Sung Yope, Noel Adame, Radoslav Angelov. All of these guys are very, very good, but I had to narrow it down to 10 guys, and honestly, I had to make it 14. But as always, I hope you guys did indeed enjoy this video. Once again, my predictions are coming the week of the Olympia. I'm going to build up as much hype as I can for this year's O. But after seeing all of these guys, who would you have in your personal top six? Leave it in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm Christian from Go Fitness, and that's it. I'm out.